All right, colored pencils. So key with colored pencils is to have them sharpened. That's number one. And number two is to layer your colors. So this is an imaginary landscape. So you don't have to have realistic colors. Color pencils, you never press hard to start, you build up. No matter what you're coloring, whether it's paint, marker, crayon, oil pastel, you always color in the direction of your shape. So I like to give a good kind of edge. So I'm making my tree, I'm giving him a little bit of green. Okay, and I'm going lightly and I'm using gentle circles. So I went in the direction of the outside of my shape and I'm going in gentle circles. Ellie, what'd you need, love? Okay, oh, it's right here. But right now I want you to watch the color pencil, okay? I just moved it because it was uh, on the drying rack for the paints. So I'm coloring in gentle circles. And I'm putting a light base coat down, but then I'm gonna go in and add my highlights. So on the top of the tree, I want it to be lighter. So yellow's a great way to do that. And you can see once I put the yellow in, I've got some spots that I noticed that my green was a little bit thin. So and that I missed, that I didn't see. And then to make shadows, you don't wanna use your black. Ooh, I pressed way too hard there. Um, I'll have to go back and soften that. But if you use an opposite color really lightly, you can get a nice shadow and really make your work look 3D. So if it gets too red, all I have to do is come back with some green. So with paint, we always talk about how mixing opposites is gonna give you poopy diarrhea brown. In color pencils though, it's gonna give you a nice shadow that's gonna look way better than using black. I'm not forbidding you from using black, but I really want you to try to keep it to a minimum. So that way you're really building up some nice shadows. So you're keeping sharp pencils. We're not coloring solid. So a lot of times you start solid to give your shape, right, a base coat. Kind of like when we did your mask, you give it a base coat. But then you're gonna go in there and you're gonna think about your shadowy areas. You can use a similar color. Um, you can use white to add highlights. Sometimes, I, depending on the color, I'll just use a lighter version of that. That red was really juicy. I love juicy ones. I know. But I got a little too dark, so you can see I put a little bit of green in my trunk. So I'm gonna hold this up a little bit closer so you can kind of see how in the tree. Now this was really fast, um, but it's not a flat tree. It's not like a coloring book like we kind of grew up where you color each one as one color. We wanna see different um, colors in every area. Now, Here's the deal with skies, because this kills me, literally kills me. If you do all these details really beautiful, and then you start to get bored, and you come in here in your sky, and you scribble color like this, what do you think it's gonna look like? <laughs> it's not gonna look nice, it's gonna take away, your eye is gonna get stuck on the scribble coloring, and it's not gonna be drawn to the beautiful coloring. So this is the kind of thing if you need to take a break, take a break. But when you're doing sky, you can take your color pencil and instead of using the very point, you hold it farther back and you can use it gently on the side and get big marks, but lightly and smoothly without making scribble scrabble marks, okay? So I can take this and it's gonna look way more gorgeous and I'm gonna blend in a little purple in the sky here, but it's gonna look way more gorgeous than my fast scribble coloring. So it kills me, it kills my soul a little bit. Every time I have a student that does this gorgeous artwork and then they get bored the last two minutes and they start pressing really hard in scribble coloring, and so we want to have a nice, gentle, it doesn't have to be super bold. It can be nice and gentle. 
the light's a little shadowy, it's hard to see, but you want it to be really smooth, okay? So you have to color four of these, and then um, we'll probably cut them on the... That's the trouble. You have to spend as much time on number one drawing as on number four. Because what I had a lot of students do was one and two were awesome, three and four were scribble scramble, and so when they got put together, it looked terrible. So you just really have to have patience with this. If you need to take breaks, that's fine. I'd rather have you take a break and have it look beautiful. And then we're gonna cut these and we're gonna arrange the four so they make that finished artwork, like make it look like you're looking into a kaleidoscope, okay? All right.